Javier Coronel Bayardo. Which is a mouthful, so let's call him what his rich friends do. Carzita. He's a Mepi, a Mexican preppy, or a prepsican if you prefer. His main achievement in life was to win the sperm lottery. Gonzalo Coronel Bayardo, telecom billionaire, is his daddy. Gave Sunny everything. Money, cars, education, BA from Harvard, MBA Wharton Business, D Phil from Oxford to acquire a little sophistication and some good English clothes. Now he gets his own resort to run. This used to be a national park, but Santa Blanca turned it into an exclusive resort. It's here that Carzita does what Carzita does best, making connections between Santa Blanca and anyone that's anyone. CEOs, politicians, judges, socialites, even celebrities. You know who that is, right? Hint. She just went to rehab for saying something racist. What Carzita offers the cartel is more than just business deals. It's a level of corruption we've never seen before. And it's on you to stop it. We cut the connections, we stop the corruption. Intel on this guy is sketchy at best. The cartel and the Bolivians call him El Comandante, age unknown, birthplace unknown, real name unknown. An officer in Unidad, Bolivia's military police, El Comandante made a name for himself hunting down rebels. The rebels had something of a foothold in Media Luna until El Comandante and Unidad arrived in force. It was a slaughter. Rumor has it our boy personally took a few scalps as souvenirs. On paper, he's a lieutenant colonel. In reality, he wields the kind of authority reserved for legends. And he's been using that authority to put Unidad to work for Santa Blanca. But the way he's been insinuating Unidad into the cartel's operation should make Sueño worry. If it were up to him, Sueño wouldn't work with anyone from Unidad. His problem is the rebels. You can't fight what you don't know. And if there's one thing El Comandante knows, it's the rebels. Without him, Media Luna would be in rebel-controlled territory. Like all good frenemies, Sueño keeps a close eye on El Comandante, careful never to let down his guard. Her Santissima Muerte so loved the Santa Blanca cartel that she gave us her only begotten daughter, that whoever believeth in her should not perish, but have everlasting life. Many years ago, we were in trouble, in La Desesperación, on the verge of extinction, being torn to pieces by the snakes and ratas. I believed that hope was lost, that it was too late for us, Era el fin. But just when I was ready to give up, it happened. Nidia Flores came forth, known to us as La Reina de Belleza, the Beauty Queen. And with her, she brought prosperity, wealth, and retribution. We feel her charity, su amor, deep in our hearts. As she continues to spread her gospel across the world, to every corner of the globe, praise to Saint Nidia, Queen of Queens, Reina de Reinas, Goddess among mongrels. They say every man has a fatal flaw. El Bikita's is love. A smuggler from the age of six, El Bikita's father used to tape Acapulco gold on his son's body and then send him across the border. He called these trips vacaciones familiares, family vacations. By the time he was 13, Bikita was a trapeciador, a master smuggler. Cigarettes, alcohol, name brand clothes, DVDs, oil, wildlife, weapons, and of course, people. One time he even smuggled in half a kilo of yellow cake uranium. If someone wanted it, El Bikita could move it. But it was never really about the money. For him, it was the rush. Until he met the beauty queen. Nydia Flores saw his talent and made him her right-hand man. Nydia was the brains. Bukita was the brawn. The thing is, he was head over heels from the moment he first laid eyes on her. Nydia never felt the same way, but one drunken night she gave in. A little bit of sperm roulette, and nine months later, they had a daughter, Valeria. 
They say every man has a fatal flaw. El Bukita has two. And who was it that attacked you? Men who work for Nidia Flores. It was nonsense. They suspect Pulpo of plotting against Nidia. Will you excuse us for a moment? Pulpo and Nidia have it in for each other, huh? We need to use it to our advantage. Make them both think they're stealing from each other? Exactly. Just need to find ways to do that. We'll get back out there. Get some intel we can use to break that relationship. Hey, who did you guys say you were again? Pulpo's cousin, on his mother's side. When I was a kid, we used to live over the train tracks. Every time a train went past, I would run into my mother's bed, and she'd assure me there was no such thing as monsters. She was such a liar. El Pozolero, also known as the Stewmaker. Sometimes the cartel needs a dead body to completely disappear without a trace. In such cases, they ship the cadavers off to San Mateo. The first thing El Pozolero does is place the bodies inside a barrel, which he fills with caustic soda, sodium hydroxide, then covers the drums, stirring occasionally. After 24 hours, there's nothing left but a thick sludge, a stew. He pours this into a pit. Any leftover teeth or bone fragments, he smashes into dust. Last year, more than 300 people disappeared in San Mateo. Their families have no idea if their loved ones are alive or dead. They can't have proper burials. They can't have closure. The only one who knows what truly happened to these people is El Pozolero, the monster who melted them. Forgive me, Padre, for I have sinned. Speak the secrets of your soul, my son. Padre, I have lost the love of the people. I thought it was enough that they feared me. I was wrong. Me equivoqué. To win, I needed their love. Why don't they love you, hijo? Because you have not made them love you. You must hold charity events. Gracias, patron. Mother's Day and the Day of the Children. You must provide hospitals, schools, everything the people need. Es tu gente. Because the Bible tells us, By his works shall you know him. 